In these revision videos, I'm going to take us through the main scenes in Macbeth. This is to help support you with your GCSE exam. This is the first time I'm teaching Macbeth at GCSE. I've taught it at uh, Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 5. Actually, this is the first time I'm teaching at Key Stage 4. Um, a lot of students have missed a lot, so I want to give a whistle-stop tour. So this first video is on the key scenes in the play. And for those my students, those people who are watching this who are my students, you have a copy of this already, but this is easily constructed or made by anyone. I'm just going to take you through some of the main scenes. So 1-1 one, one and 1-2, one, we open with um, these three witches, and the kind of iconic witches who um, announce that they're here to meet, and they're, they're going to meet this character called Macbeth. And we, we don't see him, but we hear about him. And the first thing we do is we, we, we hear a story about Macbeth and his uh, valiance and his ability uh, in warfare and putting down a rebellion. And so uh, some rebellious, so Scotland's at war with Norway, which is something you should know about. And there are some rebellious Scots and, and uh, one in particular, Cawdor, um, is caught and executed and his post or his station is given to Macbeth. So Macbeth is going to be the new Thane of Cawdor. Um, after the battle, Macbeth and his, um, and oh yeah, with each one of these, I try to give a quotation that would help remind you um, these witches open, when when shall we three meet again? They've got this really strange way of speaking everything and the rhymes and the three of them and it's very mysterious what they are. So Macbeth and his best friend Banquo in 1-3 meet the witches um, and they're ha and he they hail him as uh, the Thane of Glamis which he is but then the Thane of Cawdor and king in the future and Banquo's kind of annoyed he's like well what's my prediction they, they find it all funny he's like okay well you will be and this is really difficult because these predictions go against each other right from the start you'll be father to a line of kings but you'll never be king so notice this makes him and his best friend in conflict right away but they don't really take it very seriously um they want to know macbeth really wants to know more but they go away they they kind of they they vanish um some messengers come from the king and it turns out that Hamlet is, in fact, the Thane of Cawdor. And this starts to get his mind moving in anticipation. Can I be king? Um, thou shalt be king there hereafter, the prediction. In 1-5, we meet this iconic character, um, Lady Macbeth. And she's reading a letter where uh, Macbeth reveals to her everything. And she's quite amazed and empowered with this and we see that she's really um she's worried that Macbeth is too full of the milk of human kindness which is really ironic considering the first things we see him do is like cut rip a guy's body apart and cut off his head but maybe in personal relations he's too soft he's too milky he's like a kid and she's she's the hard one she's the hardcore one so she decides she's going to come up with a plan um to murder the king set it up so that her husband can become king and she's going to persuade him um and she she's quite witch like weirdly she calls out to the spirits of the night and calls on um these powers um to 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 bring evil into her um and she's going to convince her husband of what needs to be done uh they meet up, the Duncan comes, and they welcome them to their home. So it's a perfect plan for her. Um, in 1-7, Macbeth's getting a little bit uneasy, so he leaves the banquet to really think about what he should do. Um, and he's, he's getting a bit worried. Is this actually a good idea or not? He has moments of doubt. Again, this is a play so much that exists in the mind and the psyche and we really see the character of Macbeth wrestling um, with so, so much of the drama though bloody and gory and action filled is actually um, psychological um, and Lady Macbeth just rips into him 
uh, mocks him. Are you really a man? These kind of things. He's worried, like, what if we fail? And she says, we're not going to fail. Um, but this worry is in him, and she, she just gets him to agree to do it. So in 1-7 is really crucial because it's here where the doubts are aired, addressed, and thrown over. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we enter into the second act, and uh, Macbeth sees Banquo, and Banquo's got his son Fleance, who will prove really important because the prediction is that whether it's Fleance or Fleance's heirs, they will be uh, king one day. Um, Banquo talks about the dreaming of the witches. Banquo himself is a really interesting character and has some ambitions, and he reveals them here. But Macbeth pretends that he hasn't thought about it at all, and he says, okay, let's talk more tomorrow. And then is this really, really iconic scene? Is this a dagger which I see before me? He hallucinates, imagines, but it becomes so real for him. This external um, anxiety and desire becomes something that he can see, a dagger. Um, and it guides him and takes him to Duncan's room. It's time to murder. So this imaginary dagger is this remarkable, remarkable uh, kind of iconic speech in the play, um, the soliloquy, because he's alone, and we, we get insight into his mind. Um, in 2-2, two, two, uh, uh, this is, the, we don't see the murder, we just see around the murder. So we see before it, and then we see um, Macbeth come in with the daggers, just covered in blood, and he's completely... Uh, uh, disoriented, anxious, nervous. He's freaked out completely. Um, and Lady Macbeth's very annoyed with him because he's brought the evidence with him. And she says, okay, look, you have to go put those back. Um, she, she's got the guards drunk uh, to set them up for this. He can't do it. Um, so she goes and does it. And the murder is done already. I mean, all this action is so fast, Macbeth. And then there's this pause. There's this huge pause with this hilarious uh, drunken guy, uh, the porter. He's the, the doorman. Um, he th he th he's so drunk, he thinks he's the porter to hell, which is both funny and maybe prescient over what's going on in this play about, about where we are now in this nightmare, this murdered king. Um, we're waiting for everybody to get there and discover there's knocking, 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 trying to get in, trying to get in. He lets them in finally, um, and it's been a horrible night. Nature has been giving them all sorts of signs of brutality. Something's wrong, and of course, they find the murdered body. Macbeth does something, which is these drunken soldiers covered in blood and with the knives, and they're just there. Macbeth kills them, and it looks very suspicious. Everyone kind of looks over and says, well, what's that about? Um... Uh, they were the primary suspects. We needed to interrogate them, but Macbeth kind of styles it out and says it's okay. Duncan's sons, they're afraid, so they take off to England and Ireland, respectively, um, and they become the number one suspects for who did it, and they have um, motive because they can become king. Um, and because they take off, and because of all this tumult, it seems that Macbeth will become king. So he is crowned, he will be crowned around here. So he pretty much has it. But Macbeth's problems just start. So he's king now in 3-1. Um, and he has an eye now on Banquo. And he starts getting nervous. And they're going to have a feast. And Banquo's a little bit suspicious. And Macbeth is suspicious. Then Banquo's suspicious. There's this fantastic tension between these best friends. And um, Macbeth can't stop thinking about this prediction about uh, Banquo's kids. And he decides to murder both Banquo, his best friend, okay, and his child. Uh, so we see he's getting deeper and deeper and darker and darker. And in 3-3... Three, three, the assassins do kill Banquo, but they don't get Fleance, of course, because it keeps getting worse. 3-2 um, is a great scene between the Macbeths. You know, Shakespeare, it's weird because the, this couple, these Macbeths, are probably um, 
the happiest married people we see um, in Shakespeare, which I guess we could, it could be a contestable phrase, but it, it's worth thinking about how he doesn't really show marriage in that great a way. And here in 3-2, it's Lady Macbeth and Macbeth talking, and he's got this great line full of scorpions is my mind. She's like, talk to me, like, tell me what's going on. What are you worried about? And he goes, you, you know, it's going to get so much worse. Like, I can't. It's better you stay innocent because he's just going to get, he's going to murder everybody is basically, he's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And she hears, she knows, but, you know, he doesn't want to talk to her about it. Um, in 3-3, three, three, they're murdered. Uh, and then this is a very important scene, another hallucination scene for, for Macbeth. It's a banquet, and the ghost of Banquo comes. Bloodied, gory, shaken off that gory locks him. He's screaming at this emptiness. Nobody else can see the ghost. Um, <clears throat> this is so sad. Um, he's told that Fleance escapes, so he, he, he can't be sure he'll be king. And, and he's a complete mess. And everyone sees how insane he's acting. And Lady Macbeth is really angry at him. In 4-1, Macbeth goes back to the witches. Um, double, double toil and trouble. We hear more about what their lives are like and what they do. Um, and he wants to know more. He, he needs to know more about the future. Uh, and what he's told is now new predictions. Beware of Macduff. Um, no one born of woman can harm him. And uh, you don't have to, you'll never be conquered unless Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane in your castle. So you get three new predictions. Each of them will come true, of course, but he thinks it's impossible. He's like, okay, Mac Macduff, fine, I got it. I'm going to go kill him. Um, the rest, who isn't born of a woman? That's ridiculous, and Forrest can't move. So he's feeling pretty good. Um, 4 2 is uh, the raid on the Macduff family home. We see a tender moment between mother and child and um, Macbeth has everybody killed, like just savagely killed. It's, um, but Macduff has taken off already and his child asks this question of the mom, what is a traitor? Um, this is pretty important because now children are fair game. Um, this is an indication that Hamlet, uh, not Hamlet, Macbeth has gone deeper and deeper into this Um uh, here we go. Now we have a doctor and a waiting woman. Oh, yes. So the sleepwalking scene. So this is really crucial. Out damn spot. Lady Macbeth's guilt takes her over and she is um, now um, obsessed uh, in her sleepwalking. She admits everything. She's filled with anxiety. She's filled with guilt, um, which culminates in 5-5, five five, her suicide. And Macbeth is so sad. And then, of course, in 5-8, it all goes wrong. Because um, earlier on, uh, the soldiers decide to cut off the wood um, to uh, as camouflage. So it appears like the forest is moving. Tick, that one's gone. Um, and then the, the second two collapse into one another. Macbeth is feeling bulletproof because he can't be killed unless someone's not born of a woman. Macduff says, ah, loser, I am born cesarean section. He didn't come through. Um, a woman, he was taken out of the womb, so he is the one, and he defeats and murders um, Hamlet, which isn't unproblematic. It is revenge, but it is not unproblematic. Um, uh, and Macbeth is vanquished. So that's a whistle-stop tour. That's that's a pretty much a summary of the play of Hamlet. Um, you should know the whole story. You should know the key scenes. Uh, we're going to look at some in detail in the next videos.